I never remember ever wanting to be anything but a vet. I think uh, from literally as long as I can remember, I wanted to work with horses and I wanted to be a vet. Um, my mom always wanted to go to vet school. She never did. Uh, so she was really glad when I started expressing that I wanted to be a vet. She was like, oh yeah, we can have a vet in the family. Um, but yeah, I never saw myself doing anything else. This was pretty much it. This was plan A, B, and C. So <laughs> I only applied to one school. I put all my eggs in one basket. I know they tell you not to do that, but I did. And you know, it worked out, thankfully. I love the good clients, I really do. Like, the people that love to see us and you know they do what you recommend and um, I just love coming to work for them and their animals and helping them get better and helping um, improve agriculture. I mean, we have a very nice client base. We have, we get to work on a lot of performance horses, you know, not just your backyard animals. Like I get to do a lot of high-end horses, which means we get to see a lot of beautiful horses and um, people want to do a lot of cool treatments or, you know, we can go a lot further with a lot of these cases because the horses are so valuable or um, somebody has like a big emotional attachment to them. And so they're willing to go above and beyond to try to fix their horse, which makes me excited like when somebody says that they want to go for treatment because I'm like you know now we get to fix it or at least we get to try our hardest you know to fix it and we don't always succeed but you know we give it our heart you know we give it our best shot in our performance horses it's always you know getting after that blue ribbon you know we want you know the the better our clients horses perform the better that makes us look because they're like you know, well, how's your horse going so good? Like, or how, they fixed, you know, who fixed your horse for you? Cause you know, it was doing X, Y, and Z. And so we fix them and we get them running like a well-oiled machine again. And you know, then that makes us look good. Cause you know, our, our patients are doing really well. And so that's important to me is to get them back out there as, as quick as we can. And um, at least on the performance horse side. And then, you know, obviously a very important part to me too, is these horses that a lot of, horses that we work on are like family members you know people love them you know they are I mean they have them for 35 years you know and they live forever you know and so really important to me is making sure people um, feel like you know their family members are taken care of and that you know we we've got your back you know so it's really important to me in your segment, you spoke a lot about, you know, your, your passion behind, um, your work. Um, you spoke some about your background, but talk to me about, you know, the process of, of getting to where you are getting, you know, the process of long before where you are now, uh, you know, getting into vet school and kind of what that entails and, you know, kind of what that, what that looked like getting to that point. First and foremost, you have to have obviously the passion uh, for taking care of animals, not just loving animals, but wanting to take care of them and uh, being okay being around sick animals, because that's usually what we're doing, um, other than routine stuff. So to get into vet school, you have to um, complete basically what they would consider a three to four year college degree. And after you graduate high school and get into college, it's basically four years of college. And then you have four years of vet school. You're more of a minority in the vet world. I think um, mm -hmm. what I see, at least a lot of people seem to go into small animal practices, um, you know, dogs, cats, but you work in livestock. Um, with that being said, you know, what's, is that kind of is that, is that as abnormal as it seems? Um, and with that being said, also, if you could add to that, piggyback on that, you know, what, um, is there different criteria for, for becoming that type of a different vet or, you know, what, like, is there a, you have to kind of choose at a certain point? What does that look like? Everyone has to take your core classes is what we called them at my high school. Like, you know, the math, the social studies, uh, science, all that stuff. But then you kind of also have your elective classes that will um, determine what you what track you end up taking through vet school. So I took, obviously we, we all 117 of us in my vet class took the same core classes. Um, and then I elected to take a bunch of um, 
large animal focused classes, you know, like equine ophthalmology and lameness and um, large animal internal medicine and classes like that, that you um, focus really into the um, livestock category. So that that's kind of what separates you apart. But I wouldn't say that they're because the small animal people have to do the same thing too. So I wouldn't say that there's really any different requirements. Um, there's the same number of hours everybody's got to complete and everybody's got to take the, every, and the funny thing is at the end of vet school, every, no matter what classes you have taken and what electives you have chosen, uh, everyone has to take the exact same final examination. Mm -hmm.